Hi everyone, this is Yuliana Avdeva. I am delighted to send you my, my hello, uh, to say my hello and my uh, best wishes for, for our last, you see I'm a little bit nervous, for our last prelude and fugue for book one uh, by Johann Sebastian Bach. So today we are finishing our journey through the book one and after that we will be talking about the composer which I'm very happy to discover uh, is Michislav Weinberg, particularly his Sonatine. So, first of all, thank you so much for joining uh, the live stream of my recital uh, in Warsaw last week. It was, uh, for me, very special and very moving to be there, and I'm very grateful that uh, you also watched it, and that I hope that you, uh, that you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, that was a very, very special a week for me there, a special evening, and um, thanks a lot for joining the stream last week. So for tonight, yeah, I'm as as you already probably noticed, I'm a little bit again, I'm a little bit moved because, yeah, the entire book one is a long journey, is a very exciting journey, and tonight we will be having a look on the B minor uh, prelude and fugue, which is of course also a very special. Um, special um, pair because C minor, uh, B minor is of course a very uh, had also kind of symbolic um, symbolic meaning because uh, this tonality, this key is uh, very much connected also with the death, with a very dark um, color, with um, some kind of accepting the fate. It was already uh, in in the um, Baroque. Uh, music, so this is a long, um, in a way, long tradition somehow of seeing this key as a very tragic, very dark one. And um, this prelude and fugue is uh, also very, very um, meaningful because, uh, first of all, there are two um, things which are, uh, which make them absolutely unusual comparing uh, to other preludes and fugues that the prelude. Um, is written in a in two period form, so with repeats, which is actually more. It's, it didn't happen in any other pair in, in any other prelude, um, and so it gives us more the uh, sweet feeling. I show you how it looks like. So the prelude is divided in two parts, um, and both parts must be repeated. So we have here. Here we have the repeat, and also in the end. <laughs> here I am, and here in the end again. So this must be repeated twice, which is very well. It is an exception here in this book. Another exception is that here Bach in this prelude and fugue for both he writes an indication of tempo or character. So is here it says hmm, what I'm showing Andante, which gives us again, of course, a very clear. Uh, link to the movement that it should be a kind of moving uh, motion so it's not not, not uh, too slow and for the fugue here says Largo and uh, this is also another exception uh, for the book one uh, because by, actually basically it is very rare that Bach indicates any um, tempo or let's say character so it, I think it, it, it must have been of something of highest importance for him if he does this in this, uh, in this pair. So the B minor, yeah, of course, um, many pieces are coming in my mind, uh, uh, associating with the with the B minor, and of course, Bach pieces like Mess in B minor, and some some parts also from the, uh, uh, of course, the French. Uh, French Overture, some parts of Passion. Um, then, of course, um, Schubert somehow also very much connected the B minor with the, the kind of the symbol of death, which we hear in Winterreise, for instance. For Beethoven, Beethoven indicated in, 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 in his notebook that um, the B minor is a black key. So it's actually, uh, although he was apparently working on a symphony in B minor, but it's a really rare case that he uses uh, this tonality. Uh, any uh, any ideas you have about the pieces in B minor? I have another piece which comes to my mind, big piece, tragic piece, is uh, Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony and Chopin's Third Sonata, exactly Marek, that's absolutely 
absolutely right. Liszt sonata, Sam, great. And th those pieces have extremely tragic, very um, special, indeed, um, mood in a way. Analyze Rachmaninoff Prelude, Op. 32, number 10, exactly. Wonderful example of a dark, um, dark um, color of the uh, B minor. Second ballet by Liszt. Or the right, another amazing, wonderful, wonderful piece. Love it as well. That's uh, so you we we see so many. Um, Alexis symf suggesting symphonies, uh, symphony number eight by Schubert. Brilliant. That's just yeah. There are, as we see, there are so many uh, many important pieces in the Munich music. Um, history in, in, in this tonality and indeed it's uh, very much somehow it's very it's very tragic but um, it has a, also great expression somehow so uh, Bach's mess exactly uh, Sam that's that's right so this closing prelude and fugue um, it's also actually the, probably also the, the largest um, the largest um, set, be also of course because of the <laughs> repeats, but not 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 only. And the um, uh, I think it's very interesting how Bach also uh, composes here the prelude, uh, because we have here clearly um, an accompaniment in the left hand in the in eight uh, eight notes value. So. eighth notes and this is a kind of again perpetuum mobile it never it never stops it's a very uh, smooth uh, line which the left uh, left hand plays of course here uh, the question is how to articulate this because of course um, on the on the uh, harpsichord it would not definitely not be possible to play it uh, legato but anyway I think uh, what I find for me very interesting is those Phrasing, these curves in the phrasing, uh, which is also possible to show without playing very non legato, very staccato like, but also not not really a, a very very thick uh, legato. I'm talking about, uh, for instance, uh, um, phrasings like this in bar uh, up, uh, from bar five. From <laughs> because it's the accompaniment but still it's for me it was very interesting to to discover this line where it goes how it how it supports uh, the right hand and the right hand has two voices uh, so it's a duet um, and it is very uh, interesting how Bach also uh, uh, composed the beginning it starts with a uh, with a jump in the fourth <laughs> coming all over the uh, the prelude sometimes it uh, appears in a wonderful um, sequence like this <laughs> which of course reminds me auto automatically somehow on the section from the um, uh, <laughs> Also, um, we hear how Schumann uh, was inspired and influenced, in a way, by uh, music of um, of Bach. In the end uh, of the prelude, I think it's already a preparation for the fugue, because in the end, suddenly, uh, the chromatic lines is coming in the first in the left hand, and then in the right, and it sounds really somehow because basically it's very. Of course, there are many modulations here in the prelude. But in the end, uh, it gets really very, very chromatic from bar 43. Why I'm saying that it's a preparation for the fugue? Because the fugue, the subject of the fugue, is one of the most 
special ones, I think. So I have to hear those. One of the most expressive subjects for me in, in, the, in the entire uh, book one, of course, because um, it's, well, it's a quite uh, long one, but the expressivity in it is absolutely amazing because, of course, of those side motifs, of these pairs. By the way, this is another one third exception here. Bach also writes the articulation. He writes here, because normally he does not uh, indicate any 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 articulation. So here we have those clear marks of the waves. And this leads us to the dominant, to the F, F, F sharp minor. And the counter subject is a completely the opposite of this um, subject because it consists of two different other types of the uh, uh, note value. So we have here the 16th. subject, very uh, diatonic uh, counter subject, and uh, out of these 16 notes, many beautiful um, in, in, in inter, inter, well, episodes will be built. So, uh, for instance, uh, from bar uh, 16, and again, very beautiful segment sequence. It's a very rich in har harmonically also, although we have those uh, chromatic mm, mm, uh, chromatic element in the beginning. The, uh, the harmonical uh, structure of the of the uh, fugue is absolutely amazing. So it's written in four parts, and um, of course because of the subject itself, how it's how it's composed, there are actually no stretti or something like this. But for that, we have sometimes some kind of pop. So he divides. Uh, uh, the, the, the subject also because very often we will hear just the kind of false start, just the beginning um, of the uh, of the fugue. So very often just something like this, just this part. So it's always, of course, because of this. Um, this is very very um, expressive. So it's a highest degree of um, sorrow in a way what I somehow what I what I feel there which is of course um, yeah it coordinates with the with the color of the key so I am very happy to perform for you the last prelude and fugue from the book one by Johann Sebastian Bach in B minor
Well, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work tonight. Um, and of course, I'm very upset about the fact that um, this is happening. And um, I would be very happy if some of you, maybe someone, has the experience with these kind of things, uh, with the um, Facebook streams which are being blocked uh, because of the... Uh, uh, claim because Facebook is claiming uh, for the uh, uh, rights and um, if someone uh, has any suggestion or any um, experience with that please get in touch with me I would really appreciate that because actually the good the positive thing is that I wanted to of course to do the b second book and I would be delighted to go on with this because for me this wonderful journey we had through the book one uh, it, it was a great experience of course musically and also just having uh, shared so many ideas with you and get, get got also so much um, positive great things from you that was absolutely um, amazing so I would be really uh, I would be really happy to do this, but for that I need to solve these technical uh, problems first. And of course, for me, uh, it's a little bit sad that especially uh, this one is um, the, the last one because it's so be beautiful and so special. Uh, somehow it doesn't uh, seem nothing seem not to work tonight. So I would record it and I will put it as a uh, video on uh, the Facebook and then um, yes I will um, I will um, try to get this problem solved because yes as I'm saying this is uh, my uh, plan and my idea is to go on with the second book if you have any uh, also any suggestions about the how we can we can um, go on with the book too? I mean, what kind of um, I don't know? Maybe you have some yeah, some ideas. What um, also what kind of things about the preludes and fugues uh, would be particularly interesting for you? Please, uh, I would be delighted to um, read it in the in the comments because um, yeah, I would be just very happy to know your thoughts about that and also of course the feedback about the book one um well i actually wanted to um, also to talk a little bit about the music of weinberg actually this was a very important issue for me as well because originally i wanted to um, talk about weinberg uh, in um, connection with the g major prelude and fugue but then i was in um Dushniki uh, in Dushniki's Drew, and of course there was no place for Weinberg there. But um, yeah, I will still I will have share some words about this a very special composer, which I was lucky to discover a couple of years ago thanks to Gidon Kremer, who invited me to participate in um, in special project at the Vienna Festwochen at Vienna uh, Vienna Festival. Uh, at the Musikverein in Vienna, uh, that was a project featuring the uh, music of uh, Mieczysław Weinberg. So Weinberg, Mieczysław Weinberg is a Polish composer who was born in um, in, in uh, Warsaw in 1919. And he, uh, of course, he uh, uh, first he studied in Warsaw, but uh, in 1939 he had to escape Poland. He was the only m member of the family who was able to leave. And he lost his um, parents and his sister, um, yes, uh, 
uh, through the uh, uh, Nazi regime and so he uh, actually first he went to Minsk where he continued his uh, studies and then he was evacuated uh, to Tashkent and uh, that's where the connection the first connection with uh, Shostakovich happened because Weinberg sent him his the score of his one of his first symphony his symphony and Shostakovich was very impressed and he helped me help him a lot to move to Moscow where Weinberg also lived until his death in 1998 uh, sorry 90 I'm sorry 1996 so um the music of Weinberg is absolutely, it's, the range of the expression is, is so huge because, of course, um, he composed in so many different styles. Uh, for me, I found out later that my, actually, my first encounter with Weinberg's music was uh, through the cartoon Winnie the Pooh, the Soviet cartoon, which every, every kid uh, probably also still, even of my generation, knows. It has a wonderful music with a charming, very positive, very moving uh, music. And um, I, I, I just didn't realize, of course, that it's the same, same Weinberg. So basically in the Soviet Union, he was more famous for uh, the movie, uh, movie music and cartoon. But his basic, um, uh, his basic work was, of course, in classical music. And he left more than 20, uh, he left 22 uh, symphonies, uh, lots of chamber um, uh, symphonies for chamber orchestra, uh, many sonatas for uh, eight sonatas for violin, um, basically also many string quartets. Of course, the opera um, Passenger is uh, actually, of course, also one of the pieces, probably one of his uh, most famous pieces. Um, but why, why also I'm coming, um, uh, always coming back to Weinberg since then, because first I have played this piano quintet, which is uh, an absolute amazing piece. So Gidon Kramer made the transcription of this uh, quintet for a string orchestra with percussion. And this is what I performed. Uh, this was my first piece of Weinberg, which I played, and I was so moved by this deepest expression that was absolutely um incredible also the fourth uh the fourth um, uh, the slow movement with a big big piano solo like cadenza is absolutely amazing uh, and later on also uh with with Gidon Kramer uh, we worked on wonderful chamber music uh, pieces like the piano trio which we have also recorded and uh, this recording has been uh, released last uh, year on the Deutsche Grammophon. Also, uh, the piano trio, the um, uh, the sonata for violin uh, for violin in uh, piano number six, and some early pieces. And these early pieces are complete. Well, that was also very interesting because they are composed in a com in a such a much more an expressionist style. is more positive, more dreamy because the, of course th these personal experiences which we Weinberg. Uh, survived first, yes, in 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 Poland, uh, his personal tra tragedy also of um, losing his uh, family, and also later on, uh, it, he was married um, uh, with the daughter of one of the most famous um, actors and um, a directors of a, a Jewish theater, uh, Solomon Michels, who has been. Uh, murdered in in 1948 on Stalin's order and uh, after that Weinberg uh, also started to be followed and finally arrested um, in 1953 so actually it's only because uh, he was saved only because of Stalin's death so this is of course uh, also what um, he in a way, I, in my personal opinion, also reflects in his music. So this um, personal experiences which he um, lived through, it's yeah, it's very, very tragic. And of course, many pieces um, of also of, of the later uh, later period are very, very dark, but not all of them. So, for instance, the sonatine, I would like to. Yeah, to, to, to 
play now is just yeah to because it is it has an importance for me also personally. Um, it is um, Sonatino plus forty nine. Uh, it's also um, dedicated to Dmitry Shostakovich. So Dmitry Shostakovich was a big, uh, was a great friend also of Feinberg. They were uh, very, mm, somehow Shostakovich had also a very high opinion of uh, Weinberg's, uh, Weinberg's music. And um, they played many times uh, four hands together. Also uh, the Shostakovich symphonies, they premiered for the, authorities before the uh, symphonies were performed uh, by the orchestra, they had to be approved by the um, authorities. So Weinberg played uh, four hands or two pianos, uh, the Shostakovich symphonies. And there are also some recordings of Weinberg playing uh, himself. Uh, this is quite, quite amazing. So he was a wonderful, uh, wonderful pianist. So the Sonatine, well, I'm working, I didn't mention, in the beginning that I am working also on his uh, fourth piano sonata, which is a very special uh, piece composed in 1955. So already after also his experience, uh, yes, uh, in yeah, being followed and uh, arrested and in the prison and uh, all this fear, all this instability, this is all there. But this sonatine is from um, 1951. It has, it's in three, mo three movements, he revised it actually. There is another version of this, uh, of the uh, sonatine, which he finally, um, yeah, it's a little bit longer version of this, but the, uh, the sonatine opus 49 is, consists of three movements. Uh, the first movement is, it says Allegro Leggero. Um, it has maybe also several moods in it. Um, it's tonal music. Uh, Weinberg has, he, as I was saying, the range of his pieces is huge because some, some of them are written in a very classical way and some are really atonal and uh, the diacophony and this, all this kind of uh, things. But th this uh, sonatine is um, tonal and it um, starts in with a very, somehow very light, pleasant mood. sunny day walking around and um, in, a, in, a, in a good uh, good mood and then we have this element cello palm palm so it's more folks music then in the middle some suddenly we have a waltz waltz is basically appears very in several works of Weinberg but it's never it's always it's here I feel it's like it would be a waltz of shadow. So we have pianissimo and so it's always this. So we're coming from a sunny day. Suddenly it's it's something very very dark and uncertain. So this combination, this fragility again. It is very close also in the, 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 those sides are very close uh, together in Weinberg's music. The second movement is saying adagietto lugubre, so uh, dark, very sinistre uh, music. It's in a way it's a chacon because we have in the left uh, hand always the same movement. So this figure is coming, is appearing several times, sometimes it's a little bit modified. And then the, the voice, the dark voice is singing. Actually, it's a very, very dark, although it says uh, it's still, in a way, G major, but of course it's um, also with uh, many, many modulations. 
in the end it's very interesting how he did it. It's a kind of scherzo. Um, it's very, uh, very sharp, very, in a way, also ugly. Um, for me, I hear, hear it also very, very, in a, uh, very much in the orchestra uh, way. So. But it's um, I don't know maybe again it's a side like in Bach like we had in the in the in the fugue. So I'm I will perform the sonatine for you now, Opus 49 by Mieczysław Weinberg.
Sonatin, um, yes, Opus 49 by Mechislav Weinberg. Um, so if you have, if you have a chance to listen to his music, it is really, really very, very special. And of course, his personal life, his fate um, is also very, uh, very tragic and yeah, for me, it, it means a lot to be able to, yes, to, I'm very happy that I have also, thanks to uh, Gidon Kramer, discovered uh, this unique composer for me, and uh, there are so many amazing pieces by him which must be played in my personal opinion. So check it, check it out. So this is all for tonight, I think. I'm very... Yeah, I'm, of course, I'm a little bit sad that um, tonight the prelude and fugue, it just, yeah, it was a disaster. But anyway, um, it was a great, great um, journey. Uh, and I'm very happy that uh, I had this wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. Uh, and yes, I will be working on the book too. And I will let you know. Um, of course, we'll keep you posted when it will be ready, when uh, we will continue with the book too. And of course, any other news, of course, with um, concerts, with um, uh, streamings, with broadcasts, I will, of course, also share it with you because it's great um, to feel that, um, although, uh, of course, now we are not um, able to attend concerts and uh, to travel uh, still there is a possibility to connect there is a possibility to share passion to music and this is I think what um, what um, I felt also very much from you that um, music help us to get through very also difficult hard periods in lives but anyway I wish you all well please keep safe keep healthy and uh, keep the good positive spirit thanks a lot for your um, input for just for being here for your warm words thank you very much and see you very very soon bye bye